शिव शक्तुक्त यदि शक्त प्रभावित न चे देव देव न खलु कुशल स्पंदी अथस्वाध्यंग हरिहर विरिंचादिरपी प्रणंतुम स्तोतुम वाकतमकृतपुण्या प्रभवती Namaste. So in this video I present the scriptural basis, the Vedic roots of tantra yoga, Kaula tantra. Uh -huh. Now a lot of this material I've presented before, a little bit here, a little bit there. Now I want to gather it all together and make it very coherent. and really uh, undefeatable. Why? Because there are two camps. The Tantra people who misuse Tantra as an excuse for sexual indulgence on the, on the extreme liberal side. And on the extreme conservative side, you have the religious Tantrikas. who claim that the kaula tantra the sexual tantra practice is illegitimate and not vedic so they are both off they are both contrary to shastra to scripture and so i want to present the scriptural basis of the actual kaula tantra path this is going to be i think at least two videos because there's so much material uh, there's no lack of proof of our position so first of all i want to say something about the shri vidya the shri vidya is the as terms of breadth and depth and height of of its scope the greatest spiritual path on this planet now how can i say that well if you take a look at what we presented so far about the shri vidya and you do an analysis of its comparison with other paths you'll see very clearly that the shri vidya accommodates supports and actually reifies all other spiritual paths any other path you can find especially in my experience in my life experience any of the paths that i have practiced or even heard about read about fit easily in one little corner of shri vidya <laughs> the shri vidya is completely affirming it doesn't say that any other spiritual path is wrong or bad or illegitimate but what it does do is it says that everybody has a different taste and a different choice and they should have the right to this choice so if somebody wants to perform radical tantra well that's okay huh it fits in a certain framework though and it has to be practiced within that framework otherwise it becomes merely sense enjoyment indulgence excess and excess never leads to realization huh and then on the other hand you have the people who are only into religious or intellectual practices and they also don't attain <laughs> why because they've gone to the other extreme and they're suppressing their energy and so that energy never leads to completion 
So anyway, let's take a look at the basic structure of the Sri Vidya. There are two paths, the Kaula and the Samaya. The Samaya is the religious tantra, temple worship, puja, silent meditation, kirtan, so on like that. And the Kaula Tantra is the sexual tantra. Now in the Lalita Sahasranama, there are names supporting both of these branches. Kulangana, Kulantastha, Kaulinya, Kula Yogini support the Kaula path. And Samayachara, Samayantastha, and several others support the Samaya path. I don't think I have to say a lot about the Samaya path because it's so well known and, and so much assumed to be the path. Even big authorities who actually know better Huh? sometimes present to the public that the Samaya path is the only path there is, or the only legitimate path. But actually, what they're trying to do is guard against the misuse of the Kaula path, which is very much prevalent, especially in New Age circles and stuff like that. The other day, I looked up on the internet, Kaula Yoga, I want to see who else is practicing this. And it turns out there are many people who claim to practice Kali Yoga, but they don't practice the original. Some of them even use the uh, Sri Chakra or Sri Yantra as symbols. But generally they fall into these two camps, these opposite and extreme camps. huh? The, the extreme Tantra uh, sex indulgence people and the extreme religious sex repressive people. <laughs> it's like nobody gets it right. To get it right, you have to go back to the original source, the original Shastra, the scriptures, and especially the Lalita Sahasranam and the Saundarya Lahari. The Lalita Sahasranam is very ancient. The Saundarya Lahari is fairly recent, within 1500 years, composed by Shankaracharya. There isn't any greater authority than Shankaracharya, but yet we will show in this video how Shankara actually supports the Kaula path. So let's take a look at the names in Lalita Sahasranam that support the Kaula path. This chart shows the name, its number in the thousand names of the goddess, and its meaning. So Kulamritaika Rasika means she, she who revels in the nectar flowing from the Sahasra through the whole Kula path as Kundalini. Now the Kula path, remember from a previous video, is the spinal column, specifically the uh, Sahasra chakra, the Sahasra, Sahasrara chakra at the top of the head, huh? all the way down to the Muladhara chakra at the root. And in between, there are three spinal channels, the Ida, the Pingala, and the Shushumna. The Ida is the masculine path. The Pingala is the feminine path. And the Shushumna is the balanced path, sometimes pictured as two snakes going in a spiral, just like DNA. So this path is known as the Kula path, and those who follow this path are known as the Kaulas, or in Bengal, the Baulas, 
or Kartabajas or many other names in different parts of India. But basically, there is an ancient yogic tradition that uses sex energy to open up the path through the chakras. Why does it need opening up? Because it's blocked. <laughs> and we'll get into those names in a minute. The next name is Kula Sanketa Palini. She who guards the esoteric doctrine of the Kaulas. The esoteric doctrine of the Kaulas has to be guarded because of its potential for misuse and certainly also for misunderstanding. The religious extremists misunderstand it and the indulgent extremists misuse it. So what is the real Kaula path? Well, we're going to get into that. <laughs> It requires some explanation. It's not difficult, but it just has to be brought out, especially based on the original source scriptures. The next name is Kulangana. She who is the female element in the Kula path, the Kundalini. Oh, there's so many bogus stories about Kundalini huh? on the web and elsewhere. <laughs> Everybody has a different idea about Kundalini, but what do the scriptures say? Let's go back to the original sources. Okay, Kunda means a pond or a bowl, especially, or a pit, huh? especially a bowl which is filled with some sacramental offering. So the kunda uh, at the base of the spine is called the kula kunda. The kula kunda is the reservoir of the cerebrospinal fluid ana anatomically. Uh, and spiritually, it is the source of the kundalini energy, which rises up through the spinal column. This is also described in the scriptures. Kuantastha, name number 93, means she who is the innermost reality of the Kula path. So without worship of the goddess, without actual puja and offerings of bhakti to the goddess, those who pretend to follow the Kaula path go astray and they become merely self-centered, self-indulgent uh, debauchees. Okay, and those who don't realize the playful and erotic nature of the goddess, they become dry, huh? only religious and ceremonial followers without any real practice, without any real energy. <laughs> I meet these people fairly often in the place where I stay. And to me, from my vision, huh, they have an overdeveloped brain. They're overintelligent, overintellectual, really, and very much atrophied heart and body. They have not developed their root. So they simply float. Huh? And typically these people will approach a holy man like Ramana Maharshi uh, or Mahapariyava to get blessings. You know, like, please do my sadhana for me. <laughs> it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is they have no root. They're not grounded. They're not, they have no foundation. So they try to meditate, but their mind simply goes in all kinds of directions. They can't concentrate, really. They pretend to meditate, and they do a pretty good job of that. <laughs> so anyway, Kaolini means she who is the core of the Kaola form of worship. It's a form of worship, 
Worship means you have an altar, you have a deity or a picture, and you make offerings, you do ceremonies, and so on. You see? So really, the combination of the leftist and rightist extremists is the path. And the, the Kula path is the middle path. Huh? It is literally, anatomically, the middle path and the spinal column. This is confirmed by the next name, Kula Yogini. She who is the deity of the Kaulas. So if you're pretending to practice Kaula Yoga or sexual Tantra, and you don't worship the deity of the goddess, you are bogus. You are a rascal. You're a phony. And you're deceiving yourself and deceiving others as well. Those who have no bhakti have no access to the kaula path. Let's be direct about it. Huh? And this is supported by the Shastra. Next, Akula. She who is also the Shiva in the thousand petaled lotus above the kula path. Well, this gets into some really deep stuff. If you have read the commentary on the first shloka by Mahaparyava that I link to in my previous videos about the Sandarbha, uh, Saundarya Lahari, then you will understand this. It's a very deep point that any form of any god or goddess is actually Shakti. Shiva originally intrinsically, is formless. Why? Because he is the Brahman. He is the pure awareness without an object before the creation. So he is actually the uh, beyond the whole path thing. <laughs> because in him there's new duality. To have a path, you have to have duality. So she is the duality, even though that duality is illusory. And so she becomes all the forms involved in the spiritual path. And one more name, Kula Rupini. She is the deity of the Kaula sect. Again, confirmed. Huh? This is name number 897. <laughs> but in the context where it appears, and also by the Sanskrit grama, rupini. Rupini means a form, rupa. Huh? So she is, her form, her feminine form, is the deity of the Kaula path. You can't get around this, you see? And this is why the modern neo-Advaita rascal tantrikas don't worship her and suppress the knowledge of the scriptures. Because if it becomes known, it's obvious that they're cheating. They're depriving themselves and their followers of the actual source of power. And if you doubt me, follow the instructions in the three videos of Saundarya uh, Lahari. Huh? And chant these verses along with me in those videos and see the kind of results you get. Or go through the uh, Siddha Lakshmi Stotram videos with, again, there's a downloadable document with the Sanskrit mantras and so on. Follow along with the mantras and see what kind of result you get. I've had people tell me that just by watching the video, they're like knocked out of their body for hours. Cool. So, uh, running out of time. <laughs> actually, nobody much watches past the first five minutes of these videos. But actually, I put all the really good stuff at the end. <laughs> so those who are still with me, now you're going to get the punchline. Well, what I'm saying is you can get any benediction 
up to and including full enlightenment simply by worshiping the goddess, simply by worship of the Shakti through the Kaula path or the Samana path, either way or both. I recommend both, actually. That's what I do. Uh, so you can get any benediction in the three worlds simply by following this path. There is nothing better. Aum Tatsat. Aum Harihi Aum.